We're here in downtown Marlboro in front of number 70 West Main Street, where all units have been called to a fire that has shut down West Main completely. As police are still looking for the suspect, we did speak with one officer who, while he was very tight lipped about the situation as the investigation is still ongoing, did confirm that they are still looking for the shooter. Two out of three of those candidates will be moving forward to the municipal elections coming up on November 5th. Assault with a dangerous weapon, threatening to commit a crime, resisting arrest. These are just some of the charges that a Marlboro woman is facing after allegedly threatening witnesses to an accident that she was involved in with a gun. Friends of the Special Olympics made quite the splash here at their headquarters on St. Patrick's Day. A local Shrewsbury couple has been sentenced to serve time in federal prison. A teacher from the Kane School has been placed on paid administrative leave following serious allegations. Investigators are still working to determine the cause of the blaze, but the driver says that the truck followed exact protocol for this type of situation. While police are searching for the driver of a blue Ford Ranger here at Maple and South Street in Marlboro after a hit and run accident involving three cars. If you look over here, you can see the damage that was done to one of the vehicles. The town of Sudbury is suing several large pharmaceutical companies for failing to disclose important safety information on several opioids. Where did that nickname Sweet Feet come from? Uh, it came from my high school yeah. creative writing yeah. teacher. And I saw those kids out there banging on the glass. They were so excited to see you guys. Do you remember, you know, what it was like for you playing hockey growing up in Charlestown? Where did you play? I grew up, um, I was always around the Charlestown rink with, uh, you know, my friends. So tell me a little bit about the seasoning that's on this. From what they let me know, I know there's a lot of garlic. There's all fresh herbs in it. Okay. And that's about as far as they let me, let me know. This recipe is just fantastic. If I could figure out what it was, I would try making this yes. at home. This is very good. I think that's why they won't give me the recipe. Well, the gates are locked and the mood is somber here in Pawtucket, which is a stark comparison to all of the excitement being felt right now in Worcester as the Pawtucket Red Sox announced they will be moving officially to Worcester's new Polar Park. It's a conversation that's been happening quietly behind closed doors since 2015. And Worcester Chamber's CEO and President Tim Murray says it's going to bring more than just baseball to the city of Worcester. We're excited. I think this is going to be a, a fantastic experience for fans. The Red Sox are an international iconic brand and having a brand like that in your community uh, says something. There's an intangible value to that. This isn't just simply about the, the, the Worcester Red Sox and a new ballpark. This is about jobs. This is about tax base expansion and baseball uh, at a pro professional level. The new location set for Worcester's Canal District will be designed by renowned architect Janet Marie Smith, known for her designs at Camden Park and the renovation of Boston's historic Fenway Park. One of the critical aspects of building a ballpark in an urban setting is to ensure that it reinvigorates the entire uh, city. The harmony and unity of Worcester and the Commonwealth as they worked together steadily, professionally, diligently uh, over a 12-month process wound up giving us the confidence that not only could it work here, um, but it certainly gave us the sense that we were very welcome here. On Wednesday, MassDOT and city officials were already on site for initial inspections. WMCT News was given a full tour of the new stadium site, officially named as Polar Park, to get the first look at what the players' view would be running all the bases on the field. And now we're going to round third and we're going to head for home. And as we do, you see we're also uh, headed for Kelly Square. One of the great benefits of having this project is the redesign at long last of Kelly Square. I've heard about this. This is going to be huge. Yeah. This was a city already on the move, already uh, redeveloping, and that's very enticing uh, to us to be a part of that. All right, and I think, you, I think you just scored. So, what will it look like? Dr. Steinberg made one aspect of the vision very clear. Will it have dimensions like Fenway Park? Maybe, maybe not. Um, will it have uh, attributes of Fenway? It will not be a replica of Fenway. We already have a Fenway. You want this to be Worcester's ballpark. Exhibit A Brewing in Framingham is bringing their A game to help out kids in the local community. Exhibit A partnered with Avidia Bank to help brew a beer called the Demo Tapes that is helping sponsor foster children to go to the School of Rock. As lovers of music, Kelsey Roth and Matt Steinberg of Exhibit A Brewing in Framingham know just how important music can be in a child's life.
The brewery, having just planned an event to release a series of test batches known as demo tapes, came up with the idea to partner with their local neighbor, Avidia Bank, to do something special for children in their community. Collaboration with Avidia Bank really started by both of us being involved in the community. We uh, just kept seeing each other and, say, and realized quickly that we have a lot of the same similar values as far as um, what a company needs to do to build community and to help the community. The two companies decided to team up to send a foster child for classes at the School of Rock in Natick, which helps children learn how to play and perform music. A portion of Demo Tape Fest where we're going to raise money um, through that to send a foster kid to classes at School of Rock. School of Rock in Natick is also kicking in for half of the tuition. A um, portion of the proceeds from each four pack sold in cans is also going to be going to this fund as well. Yet, Avidia Bank wanted to do more than just be a partner financially. They actually got hands on to help head brewer Matt Steinberg brew Demo Tape number 19. Demo Tape 19 was the beer that we decided to make together. It's a hoppy IPA with mosaic. The proceeds from both the Demo Tape Fest and a portion of can sales were donated through the Rise Above Foundation, one that is very close to both local businesses. We joined forces to raise money for Rise Above, uh, which at the time we didn't realize we shared uh, sort of equal focus on that. It was kind of a perfect you know, mix of, of uh, make beer, raise some money. While Exhibit A doesn't quite have the final numbers from how much money was raised at their demo tape party, they do know one thing. Every dollar raised that can help make a difference in a child's life is worth quite a bit. Around 4.45 p.m. on Thursday, police in Marlboro were called to the Solomon Pond Mall's Bank of America where a robbery took place. The suspect was able to get away with $15,000 in a paper bag. The suspect is still being searched for and is being described as a white husky male in his 20s, blonde hair, glasses, wearing a navy blue dark shirt. At this time, there has been no further information as to if the suspect has been found. The Marlboro Police Department has released this photo of the man entering the bank before handing the teller a note demanding the cash. The suspect then took off on foot, exiting towards Sears Department Store. Now, WMCT News did cover a story this week on a similar robbery in Shrewsbury that may be linked to the same suspect. During the robbery at TD Bank in Shrewsbury on July 7th, the suspect with a similar description also handed the teller a note demanding the money to be put in a price chopper bag like the one he carried in Marlboro. And he was also wearing New England's Patriots gear before taking off on foot. Yet another robbery in Grafton back in May depicts a similar suspect. Here is a photo of a man also wearing New England's Patriots sweatshirt and hat, also fleeing on foot. Police are asking anyone with information to contact the Marlboro Police Department's investigation unit, which can be reached at 508-485-1212, and we will keep you updated on the story as more news develops.